hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed as well or I'll be coming to pay you a visit. <laughs> When you're gonna do it, hey? We're not talking questions like what your usual people are asking, like Rob Tebbett or Coogan Cassis. We're talking real boxing questions. So when you're gonna come and do it, Eddie? You've got my email. I'm gonna send you my new phone number today. Give me a ring, Eddie. Don't you be a bottle job. Dillian White and Derek Chisora. Where, where, where are they in all the, Where are they in all this mess? What, what's happened to Dillian White? Could he have missed the boat? No, because if you look at Dillian, Dillian rarely gets injured, and and yes, he, he accumulates miles on the clock in a fight. But from from people I've never been in camp with him, he doesn't accumulate miles in sparring. Dillian is, we want to see him fight. Like, there's such fan demand for it. You've got to make the fight happen. He's got, he's got to fight one of the big three. And I think he deserves it because he's played his role well. He's just been there and goes, I'll beat everyone that's not one of these three guys. And so now he needs a chance to prove himself. Do you think Dillian regrets not taking the Joshua fight when Ruiz stepped in? Yeah, yeah. Do you think that might have been his one and only chance to be a world champion? Do you think because there's been better fighters than Dillian not won title, haven't there? Yeah, geez, they're like guys like Ernie Shavers, Bucci, Dave Tua, real savage heavyweights. They they, they Ernie like, Shavers. Who's that? Ernie Shavers, Ron Lyle. Ah, Ron Lyle. Ron uh -huh. Lyle. Ron Lyle ran, ran San Quinton Jail, didn't he, Ron Lyle? He ran it, didn't he? Yeah. You know, and now he just runs the, the Yorkshire scrap train. <laughs> Big Rod. <laughs> 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 but, but, yeah, Dillian White, I think he's missed the boat. I just... I just I just don't think you can act, you can r r roll the dice that much without taking a world title and get away with it. I think always some always comes a, you always come a cropper in boxing, Terry. Do you think? Yeah, look, we always talk about that that whole Martin Murray, Andy Lee, Darren Barker, Matthew McLean sort of quadrangle, and they never fought each other. No, they did it, and they're waiting for the right moment, and it just never happened. Yeah. And you can have that in boxing because you're not forced to fight each other. So a lot of fights that should happen never happen. Yeah, yeah, I can see I can see your point. Uh, could a massive, massive story ever come out in the next year or so that Frank Warren signed Anthony Joshua to a massive deal with Disney and Bob Arum? Could that be possible? Yeah, no. The best case scenario, if you look at what Bob Aaron tends to do now, Paul, he tends to want his fighters to fight guys on his own because they've got that, that big platform and they're hungry for spending marketing dollars. Because Bob doesn't want to spend that kind of money on marketing and promoting, so he'll let his own do the work. Let her do the work. And that kind of slowly drains the money. 
money out of his own. They just kept making his own do things they didn't want to do. Yeah. It's, it's the equivalent of old man in someone in boxing. That's what Bob Allen's really done with his own. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen to Daniel DeVar then and Joe Joyce? Where is their role in it, in all this? Uh, the winner of that is a threat. Let's, let's say Dubois stops Joyce in three, right? Yeah. Then you're saying, right, no more learning fight. Put him in with someone. You put him in with Dillian at that point. If Joe Joyce wants to stop Dubois, you put him in with Dillian. But this fight, whoever wins this fight, your world level. Yeah, it's uh, it's 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 interesting, isn't it? If so, Joshua could be fighting for a world title in a year or fifteen months or something, couldn't he? Really, technically. Uh, any, well, anyone could, depending on how how quickly we get up to speed, right? Because we don't we don't know when we're going to be allowed to have crowds at the arenas and so forth. So that's where the real money is going to come in. So whenever that's allowed to happen, that's when we'll start to see these big fights. I think we're not far off from Joshua fight guys like Dubois and Joyce. I, I, I just think guys like him, Ben, Hergovic, Yoka, I think they can do it. Unless they fight someone like Fury, then it gets a bit more challenging than Joshua. I don't think they're far off fighting. Yeah, it's... Uh... Yeah, interesting. Right, moving on then. Let's 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 change the subject. Uh, Sky Sports, BT Sports, punditry. Has the bias now got out of control? Well, they talk from scripts, right? What are you drinking there, Terry? You say that again, mate. What are you drinking? <laughs> Go on then. Has the bias got out of control? <laughs> so everyone's reading up the script, aren't they? Yeah. Carl Frotchin, though, is he? Yeah, but th think about what they're doing, Porky. They're basically selling, right? So I'm, I'm watching Dubois fight today, but you're already selling me his next fight. I mean, I'm watching Joshua fight today, you're already selling me his next fight. So you have no interest in telling me that his fight was rubbish today because you're trying to tell me the next fight already. So you never get that objective commentary. When people do it, you, you can hear that they're getting told off because the next round they change their, their demeanour completely. Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah, I see where you're coming from, but do you think it'll always be like that, Terry? No, so I think there are a handful of guys who say what they think. Maxwin will have moments where he says what he thinks. Bellevue will have moments where he says what he thinks. So will Frotch. They're the sort of guys you look to. I think guys like Darren Barker, who really need the money and they need the income, they need the profile, they'll kind of pander to what Sky wants to say this morning. But if, if you really look at it, Hearn built a team around him, right, for this boxing thing. And they're all people that Hearn put on, they're all people that Hearn's done favors. So he knows he's got a friendly audience. Yeah, it's. Uh, do you feel that uh, it's now become embarrassing for Johnny Nelson at Sky with what he's been coming out with, you know, and Bell? You do you think they've become the full-on company men for Sky now, and that Froch is a renegade, you know, the Roy Keane at, at Sky Boxing? Yeah, do you know what? I'm not his biggest fan, obviously, but he actually comes across all right, Dave Caldwell, as a pundit, doesn't he? Comes across better than he was as a boxer. Yeah, uh, uh, he, he, he gets, and he's entertaining enough. And I don't think he's frightened to have his little say, Caldwell, to be honest. Yeah, 
Yeah, I understand that. I understand that. I understand that. But I don't think he's a bad pundit, but I don't want to have it. It's not somebody I want to have a beer with. Do you know what I mean? But then again, you probably won't want to have a beer with me. No, he probably won't want to have a beer with me anyway, would he? But sometimes you're just not going to get on with people, but I don't think he comes across... I think he comes across all right. I don't think he comes across too bad, but the the bias is out of control and they've got that woman there, Anna Woolhouse. And my argument is she's trying to be a feminist too much. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but there's people in boxing who are around women's boxing and I know what they say about it, but they're just spinning a yarn. Why don't they just come out and say, look, 95% of it's pony. girls and that, them girls and the ex-team GB ones, they're alright but it's the the opponents that they're bringing over for these Team GB and ex-Olympians, it's when the bookies have got it 1 to 200 for the opponent to win, it, it's kind of a nothing match isn't it? Yeah, she does. Uh, is she something to do with not uh, kids disadvantaged kids or something? I don't know. She does, or is it might be a part time job. I'm not sure if she's a part of the pool, but but yeah, so, she. Yeah, so think about this, Russ. Savannah Marshall, two time Olympian. Yeah, world championship gold. <laughs> she was better off as an amateur. Like, Financially, probably. Yeah, we should, yeah. But we we're not, are we? No, yeah, we don't, don't have to build up. He doesn't have to marinate. He doesn't have to do anything. Just put in a ring and say, get at it. Yeah, but it just doesn't... There's politics, isn't there? You know what it's like. It's a joke, isn't it? Interesting. What do you think is going to happen to Billy Joe Saunders now? Then? Does he fight again or is he done? Think he ever gets the Canelo fight, Terry? Nah, they don't need him now. They don't need him. Yeah. 
this I'm asking you to the first, I was asking so how many years are we gonna let Billy Joe do stuff? Yeah. Before we just say, do you know what I mean? Joe deserves to be in the sport. Yeah. Do you think he's letting send down with the timings and everything that he's missed out on and do you think he'll regret it when he gets older? Wait, him and Frankie Gavin, two thousand eight to the hall, right? Just literally hit their talent out of the wall, didn't take it seriously, weren't focused when it was the run up to the Olympics. And imagine the Olympic Games that was meant to be the crowning of Billy Joe Saunders as a boxing superstar saw James DeGale crowned as that boxing superstar and that was never in the plan because Billy Joe fluffed it. It was meant to be him fighting Demetrius Andre in the 69 kilo final. That was meant to be the plan. Yeah. And they fluffed it. Like I said, do you think Billy will regret it in years to come and Frankie? Because you know I'm a big Frankie Gavin fan, don't you? Nah, mate. That, that, that's, when I, that's when I know you're not all there, <laughs> That's a bit awful on Frankie Terry. Nah, he, he, he was a guy. Do you know what it is? With, do you know what it is sometimes, right? Sometimes I think you can be boxing mature before you're physically and psychologically mature. So guys like Finney Joe and Frankie Gavin, and it's not that, I don't believe it's just a traveller thing because there are loads of talented guys who are brilliant at schoolboy level. Now, up until I get to 18, 19, they're light years ahead of everyone their age, right? Yeah. And then when everyone starts to thicken out and solidify, and you get a bit more power, and because you've always been behind guys at Billy Joe, you've got that, that hunger, which they don't have because they've always been better than you. And then suddenly the tables turn. And then these guys don't have the work ethic to then pull it back. You know, Frankie Gavin never had the work ethic. Billy Joe shows you have another work ethic. Yeah, but Billy Joe's ended up winning world title, hasn't he? Frankie didn't, didn't, although he had his chance, didn't he? Yeah, there you go. Right. It's, it's too late for those guys. Yeah, it's... Uh, what do you think will happen to uh, Robert McCracken then at the EIS? Do you think he's coming to the end of his era? Uh, Richie would all the tipping to take over, aren't they? Mm, yeah, but you got to remember, Richie would all joined in the EIS because McCracken said, "I don't quite like Richie Wood all here. So I think that was it was Terry Edwards, and then after the 2008 Olympics, they were like, "We're going to put a few Terry Edwards on." And McCracken was still around at the time, and then they just said to McCracken, "Do you want to be performance director?" And so he brought Woodall with him. And so Woodall was like his right hand man. I, I don't know if Woodall would want to take over, to be honest with you. Yeah, because Woodall's got the face for it, hasn't he? And he's a bit. You could see him being a company man, couldn't you? Woodall's 100% a company man. Yeah. Yeah, Woodall could go on Sky and then, then MBT Sport like David Day and not bat an eyelid about loyalty, though, can't he? Not in boxing, mate. There isn't no loyalty, is there? Nah, that's not that limbo like where once you're in, you're in for life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you think is going to happen with Del Boy then? Where's he? End, where's he going to end up in all this? Do you think he'll end up fighting in MMA? Uh, I don't think Derek really cares. So let's say Derek fights the uh, well, what's the last name? Who's yeah. If he loses, he'll fight Parker. If he wins, then he fights Joshua, right? Then you've got Dillian, and if he wins, then he fights Joshua. Yeah. Dillian beats Povetkin, he might move on to fight Fury. Yeah. Then you've got Joshua, right? Then you've got Dillian, Dillian beats Povetkin, he might move on to fight Fury. If he loses to Povetkin, he'll need a down partner, and that down partner will most likely be Derek Sora. Yeah. So Derek has options. Like, he could tell his name to a guy like Yoka. Essentially, Derek will tell his name. If you can pay Derek a couple of million, yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, Derek Chisora, we all said he were dead and buried after Caballel, didn't we? I mean, we even said it after Fury second fight, didn't we? But he's a survivor, man. He just knows his way back to the top. 
Yeah, he's, uh, there's no flies on Derek Chisora, is there? No, he's been well managed by David Hayes, so you've got to give David his due for, you know, using the address book. You know, like, like if you look at it, my friend, my friend Leon is now Derek's strength and conditioning guy. You know, like I'm hearing good things about what's happening over there. They're really taking Derek seriously because you can still make a few million out of Derek if you match him carefully because he'll always be entertaining. But you've got to manage that body now because he's, what, 36, 37? Yeah, he, he, he'll, 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 I think he'll be found out in next year or so, him. I do, honestly. Hey, it might be a fight for Dave Allen a year or two down the line. Do you reckon? Maybe. Where do you think Dave Allen's going to end, end, end up, Terry? What do, you, what do you think about Dave Allen? What, where's he heading? Should he be fighting Tom Little or Huey Fury? Who do you, what do you think? What next for the White Rhino, Terry? I think Huey outclasses. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to see a Tom Little fight. I think that makes sense. Let's, let's see where both guys are. And then the winner moves on. And then the, the loser stays around fringe Commonwealth British level. Yeah. Do you think that Dave Allen wins the British title? You can get lucky in life, Russ. So it's possible. But then I think who's up and coming who could challenging for that belt there's probably no one so yeah I can see him getting it yeah it's uh, do you think he beats David Price in a rematch Dave Allen yeah yeah David's all wrong for him <laughs> no be serious do you I think David's all wrong for him like if, if David Price could just stay on a one two Dave's kind of there to be hit I know he does all the slipping and rolling but he always seems to do it after he gets hit so there's an opportunity for fighting to make the most of it. Yeah. No right or fight. Yeah, it's uh, exciting times ahead. Uh, what What do you think's going to happen with boxing, social, and IFL and behind the glove? Do you think they'll last the pace, Terry? Do you think they think they might be suffering in a year? What What do you think? So they will, because people like Joshua need a mouthpiece, and they need a way of creating false demand. So they need a way of making you feel like boxing's big. And that's what these guys do for, for guys like Eddie Hearn. But essentially, these are just what I call hobbyist fans, and they're just camera jockeys. I mean, people floating around, a bit of work experience and whatnot. The only one of those guys that you have to tip your hat off to is Cougar, because Cougar made all of this possible. Yeah. But Hard worker Cougar and a good interviewer, he just doesn't ask great questions when he should. Yeah, but, but like Coogan like would say to you, Porky, if he was here, his job is to entertain boxing fans. He's not Jeremy Baxman. Yeah. That's the reality. You, you're meant to be our Jeremy Paxman, Porky. Oh, my. Well, he, what, who, who's Jeremy Paxman? Him off News Night. Yeah. Do you, would you watch News Night, Terry? Uh, I used to. I'm I'm weird, to though. I used to come in from training around that time when it was on so you watch it for a little bit just to see if he had anyone on, like he was putting anyone on the ropes but yeah. after a while you just get bored of it all yeah it's uh, and are you going to be making an appearance back on uh, Mar the new age pod father again Terry Martin's uh, what's he up to is he still alive nah so we we've done two episodes in the lockdown um, they'd be good numbers I haven't seen them you'll have to send me them Ah, right, right. Right. I didn't uh, know if the, they were going to carry on. I'm surprised. I'm glad they have. I'll have to have a listen to that. I saw the interview, well, the beginning of it, with Martin being grilled by Crawler, Frankenstein, Richard Pox, and, and uh, company man, Johnny Nelson, all sat with Million Dollar Crawler, and they put Martin on the spot about his Transformers duvet and other things and I thought Martin looked like a fanboy I thought he didn't set about him like I wanted to and I was a bit disappointed uh, with, with him to be honest he had his opportunity after all the pods and all the hammerings that he, he ended up like he, he, he was snarling like a pit bull on his pod for years and then when he got the chance he was like a poodle yelp yelp 
He was like a poodle with him. What do you think? No, Martin, look, Martin's a good guy, right? And yeah. You also have to no, saying he ain't a good guy. I'm just saying I thought he was a bit soft on him. Yeah, but he was a guest on the show, so it's very hard. You, you know, it's very hard to to terrorise someone when it's not your own show. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, they were ready for it, weren't they? Yeah, I could see Johnny Nelson licking his lips when there were nothing coming back. He must have thought it was like some of the fights he was in. You know, when he used to stink out arenas in Sheffield. I mean, he's the only fighter that I've ever seen where people throw their betting slips and, you know, they throw their coffee cups and that. He's the only person I've ever seen that happen to when he fought De Leon. I've never seen that to anybody else. So that's why I call him the stinkinator, although he's known as the entertainer, isn't he? But yeah. uh, I thought Martin were weak. But I like his pod, and if you send me them, I'll listen to them. And uh, it's, uh, it'd, be, it'd be ideal, that. It'd be ideal, yeah, mate. I think people tend to forget as well that Martin's a, Martin's a good guy. Like, yeah. Martin he also remembers that he doesn't know where that episode of Black Tide Barbershop, whatever that thing's called, he doesn't know where that's going to go. Like yeah. when, when, we, for example, when we did the podcast, we knew our audience, right? Because it's our show. So he mm. doesn't know if that's going to go to his father or whatever. So he's got to play it safe a bit. You know, yeah, maybe he yeah, gets yeah. And he'll yeah. treat it differently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Martin's a good boxing man. He puts his time. He's put his time in, and he like the rest of us. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, all right, then. Well, listen. It's been a pleasure having you on, Terry. Ah, Porky, they always, you know. I, I like that these things are getting shorter and shorter as well. That's why I'm enjoying the videos now, rather than they're nice and punchy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not we, we're not going for that long. Them long ones. Although I've had a, had a bit of an episode today with you. 35, 60 minute one but into three parts but other than that now it's straight to the point no messing about uh, it's time in it i mean if I, I could sit there all day if i wanted to but i've got other things to do and this don't uh put petrol in your car does it this youtube thing it's just a gimmick and it? it's just me having a bit of fun in it getting carried but, away but, but don't forget about that when you when you chunk it up into smaller pieces man it does wonders for your numbers yeah so then, so the, yeah, yeah, it does want to see your numbers, and as they go up, your profile on YouTube increases. Yeah, we're we're getting there. We're we're not we're not a big channel, but you know, it's uh, it's been enjoyable and it's a good time for me. This having a bit of fun with this, yeah, bouncing about. With you, man, you, you know, you're, you're, you're head of boxing and Hobson Pro. Ah, <laughs> well, I mean, we want to know. We want to know. Well, you know, what am I? I don't know what I am to be honest. I've been told I make tea. I've been told what one minute I'm head of boxing, next minute I'm Mech T, next minute pick car up, next minute can you do this, next minute can you do that, I don't know what I am, just called me a, a background guy at Fight Academy, I'll leave it to Steve and Dennis, don't I, Michelle, I'm a background guy. <laughs> ah, you're the enforcer. Yeah, we, we, uh, it's September 11th, Poms 4, Tommy Frank world title, but... <laughs> That's all we know at the moment. There's nothing else in the pipeline. It's because it's virus, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. But I think this virus will start to get back to normal, I reckon. By the middle of July, we'll be like, okay, everything's all good. So, September shouldn't be an issue, I don't think. No? Nah. No, I hope so. Like, Well, the planes are back up and running, aren't they, now? Well, I've got a passport, I can't even get a driving license, I've been waiting three months. Uh, I've sent for it because I've ch uh, had to change some on my license. But it's uh, you know, them photograph things you have on your license, they run out, don't they, every five years? Yeah, yeah, and it used to be 10, didn't it? So I got that thrown upon me, but I've been waiting three months. But other than that, I won't be going on an airplane, I don't like flying, and uh. I just don't like flying, mate, or going abroad. So if you do out abroad, you don't know what the jail cells are going to be like, do you? <laughs> I'm not a big fan abroad. Jersey's fair enough for me. But, uh, but yeah, let's hope the boxing comes back, Terry. And I mean, Eddie Hearn saying July 25th. What do you think to that? It's tight, but it's possible. I think to do that, you've got to start announcing the fights now, pretty much. 
Yeah, fighters have got to be told when they're fighting, haven't they? Because they're all up in arms at the moment, aren't they? Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting times ahead, isn't it, for boxing? Hey, Terry, you, you might be right, you know. It could be a... It could be a, 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 there could be no boxing in the UK till next year. Or well, nothing meaningful. There'll be some of that, obviously, but nothing meaningful, nothing meaningful till next year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, then. Well, listen, thanks for coming on the channel. I'll speak to you again. And I'll get this out in the next couple of days. Yeah, no worries, pal. Listen, you've been brilliant. Oh, all the best. Keep self isolating and uh, give Rico my best if you if you're shouting. I hope you're listening, Rico. <laughs> that will be mate. You you keep on trucking. Keep on trucking, Terry. Cheers, mate. Don't have nightmares. Yeah. <laughs> all right, bye. Right. And that was Terry. Terry Chap, and it that was his story. His views on boxing are the latest. Like a prat, I've just noticed I've left lens cover on on this. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to have to forward this on to get sent out. Usually I've got camera pointing on me, on, a, on my clock. But that's about it for today. So this will probably be out. Uh, probably in a couple of days. All right, so peace out. Keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. Shout out all you people who liked and subscribed the video for, and subscribed to the channel and liked the video and left a comment. Thank you very much. Peace. You liked that one, didn't you? Right, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much for liking and subscribing. It means a lot to me. Because uh, we're on this journey together, aren't we? So, anybody got any ideas for the channel, fire them over to me. PokyCorner at mail.com. Alright? Shout out to Innovation Alloys and South Yorkshire Packaging. Alright? Don't forget to subscribe, keep on trucking.